Welcome to Let's Talk, where all we do is talk about anime and other related subjects, of course. And today, we're going to be talking about a brand new manhwa that just dropped that I believe is groundbreaking in the isekai genre, and is just overall underrated, called Pick Me Up Infinite Gacha. Pick Me Up Infinite Gacha is a manhwa and web novel written by Hermode about a mobile gacha game named Pick Me Up. Pick Me Up is an infamous, brutally difficult, and hyper-realistic gacha game that involves clearing dungeons with randomly rolled champions. Our protagonist, fifth highest ranked player, Loki, loses consciousness while attempting to clear an advent dungeon, waking up in the body of Islat Han, a one-star level one mob. With this new predicament, Han Islat will have to find his way and fight his way to the hundredth lore while death constantly looms over his shoulder. Now just off that synopsis alone, you may be thinking that this is kind of awfully similar to every other isekai show you've probably watched, especially an ever so popular show called Sword Art Online, which is true. But I would argue Infinite Gacha has a better written story than SAO and all the other isekais that you're probably thinking of right now. Well, at least in the first three SEO arcs, because I didn't actually watch Alicization at all. Now, what sets apart Infinite Gacha from all the other isekais and, of course, SAO, is the fact that they establish stakes and risks incredibly well. Infinite Gacha has so many ways to eliminate our main character and side characters to the point where the audience constantly feels like there's a possibility that any of the characters can get axed in the flip of a page or a scroll of a page. Now, the standard risks you can expect from Infinite Gacha are, of course, the adventurer quarrels and monsters within dungeons. But what sets Infinite Gacha apart from other isekais and, of course, SAO is the fact that it includes an actual third party human player that is playing the mobile game that our MC is stuck with in. This creates like an inception situation where a former player of the game is getting played by a new player of the game which the former player needs to play in which technically the former player is still also playing at the same time as the new player is playing him or whatever that means. Now, as you can imagine, an introduction of a third party controlling what the MC does adds a new layer of ways the MC and the side characters get game ended. Some newly introduced risks that our characters may face are the characters actually being included as XP material for other adventurers, the player just up and leaving the game, the game crashing, and of course, our player being an absolute noob, so human error. And that's just the tip of the iceberg so far. And do not get it twisted. There are so many manhwa, anime, and manga that love just throwing exposition to make it feel like there's some inkling of risk in the story, but this manhwa puts all that risk into action constantly. We're talking first chapter, there's a bloodbath, characters are dropping like flies, and we're already seeing issues arising with our MC and the player named Anything. Yes, that is exactly how it's spelled, and yes, that name is lame as hell. And while all of this is happening, all this ass-clenching, stress-inducing events, the art and action is also immaculate. And with some minor notes, I'd just like to mention that the mystery aspect of the story is actually pretty well written, especially with the whole mystique around the shadowy figure that sent our MC to this world, and the whole world itself. Some of the stuff is on the nose, such as the fact that some of the answers kind of just scream at you sometimes, but the story does really well in adding more questions upon the answers and revelations that the audience gets. So if you enjoy a good mystery, that is another reason for you to pick it up. <sighs> Why do I do this to myself? Now, swiftly moving away from that pretty cringy joke and onto other tidbits I want to mention, I'd like to say the art is pretty good. And the only real downside I see from Infinite Gacha so far is the fact that the MC and the side characters are a little bit bland. Our MC especially is a bit more bland and cliche than the side characters due to the fact that he's kind of just like every other edgy strong guy you see in Manwa. But overall, despite its minor flaws, I'd like to say that Pick Me Up Infinite Gacha is definitely one of the more unique and refreshing takes I have seen in anime, manga, and manhwa of the isekai genre. Now, with all of that being said, I'd like to say thank you for watching the entire video. Please subscribe, like the video if you liked the video, and I guess I'll see you in the next one.